That's the 15th carry of 10 or more for Burris on the year, and he's going to do it again. And another first down as number one takes matters into his own hands. Now he's feeling it. Now he's starting to get in that zone, and when he's impossible to stop, it's when he's doing a little bit of this. Play action inside, him around the edge. Same thing, here comes Cornish, play action there. Watch all of the defenders being influenced by the run fake. He got his eyes, uh, Henry Burris has his eyes upfield, bounces it when he sees that inside pressure from Luke Mullender and gets the corner. The corner straight ahead and looked like he was going to burst right through. Stevie Bangs hanging on, pulls him down at the 45, but great first down production that time by Cornish, who gets nine. Yeah, I think Stevie Bangs is picking up his game a little bit. You know, he, he's a guy who's now being substituted in and out of the lineup defensively. You know that can't be sitting well with him. They're making some personnel changes. That's a guy who just does not want to come off the field at all. Ticat sat out defensive tackle Albert Smith today. Darius Powell in the lineup for the first time, but has seen limited reps. Short yardage to Tate off the right side. And he gives Calgary another set of downs. Now that was short yardage, but uh, we've also watched in this half Stevie Baggs being substituted in and out in certain situations. He'll come and take Luke Mullinder out now. Well, last week in Hamilton, I asked Stevie Baggs, his mother Lola was in the crowd, and I asked him how much he talks to his mom, and he said all the time, I said, what's been her advice of late? He said, stop hand fighting and get upfield. <laughs> well, that's the correct answer, a little play fake, and Nick Lewis has a second hand for the first time in three weeks, and he celebrates by running over people. Remember, he's complained, went public after last week that they didn't throw his way in the second half for two straight weeks. He's gonna line up in the backfield here, and he often does that, then bounces out and becomes a receiver, but this time, a little play action again to John Cornish. He gets out the other side of the formation, and then it's one-on-one. -on -one. Runs over Bo Smith. 16 on the play. Henry Burris. Goes back to number 82. And he's brought down inside the 35-yard line by Carlos Thomas. We talk to coordinators when they're struggling, and they'll tell you that, well, we need to get a couple more reps to get into our offensive game package. Dave Dickinson's calling a good game in this series right now because of the one play that was made by Henry Burris. Second and long, he scrambled out of there, got another set of downs, and now they can get into this routine of play action. John Cornish, little Nick Lewis, and the offense can start to roll. So the Stamps with the first down in their eighth play of this impressive looking drive. That's coming. Pressure looking downfield. Landon Talley and incomplete. Carlos Thomas in coverage, and the ball fell short. You know, Landon Talley looked like he he didn't realize the ball might be coming to him. I mean, he, he's inside. He's got Rambo here, and Landon Talley is right here running the scene. And I think it looked like Kenyon Rambo was the primary target, so Landon Talley just sort of, well, if I'm the decoy, I'm going to run down the field. And then he finally tries to find it, but it's too late to come back. Might have drawn a pass interference call had he come back to the ball hard. Trying to extend the drive. Second and ten. Here comes the heat. And they get to the quarterback left by the middle linebacker, Ray Williams, Jamal Johnson there. And the Hamilton Tiger Cat defense says enough of that. Starts with a good speed rush from Stevie Baggs off the edge. He's in that three-point stance. Now he's going to pull Henry Burris up. I thought Henry Burris might want to try and bounce it here, but watch how quickly 55 gets up in his face. He's up there. He can feel him now on the outside, so Burris hesitates for a second, and then Stevie Baggs teammates Ray Williams and Jamal Johnson get there. A little help from Luke Mulliner. Third sack of the year for the tie cap middle linebacker and now Renny Paredes to attempt a 47 yarder first field goal of his stamp career was 50 but he misses 
And away goes Thigpen. Switching gears, getting outside. Getting blocks. And into the open field. No flags. And Marcus Thigpen has his third touchdown of the day. Marcus Thigpen is like butter. He is smooth. He can accelerate, show great patience on this return. But watch just how smooth his stride is when he gets outside. Patience there to bounce it. He's got one more guy to beat. Now he's got the corner. Watch the acceleration on the cutback here and how smooth he goes across the field. And then it's a foot race with an escort from Carlos Thomas. His third of the game. What a day for Marcus Thigpen. Putting a claim in on Offensive Player of the Week or maybe Special Team Player of the Week or maybe both. Hey, down there, buddy. Often on a return, Chris, you need a block. Thank we you, will find the one. But tremendous patience and confidence from Marcus Zinkpin. That's my roommate. That's why you fucking play, baby. You better shout out Detroit. Put your head down. You know you better shout out Detroit. There were some blocks down the field. You know there's one guy that's his job for Calgary is to get to the football. And we'll see who made that key block. And it looks like to me it's going to be the middle linebacker, Ray Williams. Ray Williams coming down. He knows the return's coming his way. And it's Chevrier right at the point of attack. He gets that key block. Now it's about patience for Marcus Sigpen to get outside, and he may need one more down the field. Just great acceleration once he gets that corner. Now he turns it, cuts across the flow. And one more block here on the kicker, who is often the last guy that makes that desperation play. Brave. And the Stamps have seen this before. It's deja vu because Marcus Thigpen did this last year against Calgary. At McMahon, he returned a missed field goal. 112 yards. Lois Means with that last block. And they may have found a spot for Marcus Thigpen on offense, too. representing Hamilton Tiger Cats. I know y'all watching. Love y'all. We'll be home soon. Right, so Brandon Whitaker had a three touchdown game Friday. We've got Marcus Thigpen. A little warmer down there. Yeah. Or today. A little warmer down there that looks. I think he dunked that hat in the ice bucket. There's Coker. And he sheds a tackle. And works his way out to the 28th. Tie Cats had. 44 points a few weeks back against Montreal, over 40 for the second time, and now it's a big 20-point deficit for the Calgary Stampeders that are used to staying in games. They don't win them all, but they're usually in tight till the end. John Hopnagel, as you mentioned, Chris, has only lost three times after a loss. Since taking over in 2008, 16 wins. So he has always found a way to bounce back. Almost always. This is a huge mountain to climb. Calgary on seven wins along with Edmonton and BC now with six. Uh, it's intercepted. Bo Smith got the football. And that's the third takeaway of the day for the Hamilton Ticats. Third interception for Smith in his new position on the corner. But the first interception for this Hamilton defense in seven and three quarters of, of games. I mean, they, they didn't have one coming in in seven straight games. So this one gets them back in that turnover category. And Bo Smith, the veteran, making the play. 
No takeaways at all in the last two games, the two losses. It's funny, a few weeks ago, Hamilton fans were complaining about the team being around 500. We get 500 better. to look pretty good at the end of this day for the Cats. Drop play, Cobra. A couple of great shifts there and another first down inside the 35. Now well, they moved Bo Smith, the veteran, out to that short side corner and he got, shows him how, how that has paid off right here with Bo Smith. His man is the flat. His, his area is up in the short zone. Stop it there, guys, if you can. This is his area right here, but watch how he just patiently waits and then falls under the deeper Landon Tally to help his deep player in coverage. That's just a veteran play. How you doing, Francesca? How you doing, baby? Friend Jesse, how you doing? I love you. Double tight end formation. Over again. Ducked under the first wave and down to the 31. And that's the final play of the third quarter. It's a big one for the Cats at a 20 point lead. Well, three turnovers through three quarters, uh, certainly a key statistic so far today. Yeah, big part of the story, but, you know, I'm watching those three quarters, interesting developments here. You see Terry Grant out of Alabama. He's contributed in a couple of ways, moving Marcus Thigpen inside to the slot back position and LaMarcus Coker, who's played and made a couple of big plays for the Calgary Stampede. Some new faces. So new faces or players in different places, and that's mm -hmm. certainly been a key with Marcus Thigpen finding a home at slot back for uh, for the Hilton Tigers. Well, well, certainly Maurice Mann can play both wide receiver or slot back, so they have that luxury. They can move him outside. He can play both spots, but yeah, I, I agree. I, I think they found something here with Marcus Thigpen at the slot back position. Well, we've got a lot of football to play yet, and we've seen some dramatic comebacks in the league, but if this score would hold, it would tighten up both the East and the West in dramatic fashion. Kevin Glenn on second down. Steps up, wide open man. There's Terry Glenn again. Well, another new face finds his way into the end zone. Let's get it out. Let's go. The biggest offensive splurge of the season for the Hamilton Ticats. Well, the way he was warming up, the way he was talking to Kevin Glenn, the way that he was part of the offensive first team. You just got the feeling that he may be involved in this game. And and boy, has he ever, not just in this touchdown, but blocking in the passing game. Both of Marcus Thigpen's touchdowns, he picked up key blocks. Biggest day of the season for the Cats. 48 on the board. Very unhappy fans. And you you just felt like this team had reached a crossroads. They've certainly responded today. There's Landon Tally on the return. Good one for Calgary. Up across the 50-yard line. Well, the newcomer, Terry Grant, is going to come right into your living room as he comes out of the backfield and confusion for the Calgary Stampeders was not picked up. Wide open down the sideline. It's just a matter of could Kevin Glenn step up and get it to him. He was able to, and then he ran through the arm tackle of Darren Stone. And this will prompt questions about the Calgary defense that has now given up over 30 in five of their last six starts. Got an injured Tiger Cat on that last return. Mark Beswick, who leads the Canadian Football League in special team tackles with 19, is, is down. Another product of the Atlantic Conference out of St. Mary's. 
just take a look at Terry Grant, the newcomer, and just a little bit of what he's done. I thought the very first play, and this was it, was the one that really set the tone for him because he took a huge hit in the middle of that pile, bounced outside, picked up another six. Are you sure? Ball through the air, showed his good hands. A couple big blocks, a couple big runs. Played on the teams. And a touchdown, just a... Great debut. What a bounce back for Hamilton. Drew Tate is in at quarterback. So Drew Tate in relief of Henry Burris here in the fourth quarter. And now it's back-to-back -back games for Henry Burris at... He has not finished, just 184 against the BC Lions in their loss at home a week ago. So Joffrey Reynolds is on the sidelines, and now Drew Tate in for the senior man on that offense, Henry Burris. Second and 10. And that one knocked away as Ryan Hines, the safety, with the knockdown intended for Nick Lewis. It's a two and out as Henry Burris watches on the sidelines here in the fourth quarter. He started well. You know, I thought his first quarter, I mean, he, he was upwards closing in on 80% completion percentage to start the game. Nine for 12 to start the game. And then when he had that fumble deep in his own end, and I believe it was the second quarter, it was, it was started to unravel right about at that point. point. Two long touchdown drives early. Chris Williams going to let that bounce into the end zone. A good decision. That's going to be a single point. And it's 48 to 22. A 70-yard single for the Stamps. Shopping.